Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the coolest, most life-changing experiences I've ever had the pleasure of having, and that was the Clinton Global Initiative. So this is actually something I didn't even know what it was until I had this experience, and probably something that you don't know about either. And so I really want to talk to you about it today because it was seriously just so moving and inspirational and one of the most wonderful things I've been able to be a part of. So with that being said, if you like this video, please subscribe if you want to see more from me and ring the bell to get all those notifications. And let's get started. So I want to begin with describing what the Clinton Global Initiative even is. It's also known as CGIU for Clinton Global Initiative University. Um, and so what this organization is, it is a part of the Clinton Foundation. You might know what the Clinton Foundation is if you've ever heard of President Bill Clinton, Secretary Hillary Clinton. Yes, those are the same Clintons. Um, and so they have the Clinton Foundation and a part of the Clinton Foundation is the Clinton Global Initiative. So from here on now I'm going to refer to it as CGIU just because that's so much easier to say every single time than Clinton Global Initiative. So CGIU is a global conference for university students that are doing a project that serves a need in the world and these projects are called commitments to action. So what I mean by a project or a commitment to action that serves a global need uh, could be something with world hunger, could be something with immigration, could be something with gun protection laws laws, could be something with education and STEM education, which is actually where I fall in. Um, so you kind of get the idea. There's a whole lot of problems in the world and that problems that communities face every single day. So if you're doing something that helps one of those, that basically fits the qualifications for this global conference. So essentially, with these university students that have their commitments to action, you apply to the Clinton Global Initiative and first find out if you get accepted. I think they take around a thousand, maybe over a thousand students. And for one weekend during the fall, you get to go to a university in the United States and spend the whole weekend with all of these students from all over the world who are passionate, who are doing incredible projects and just like mind blowing work. The main purpose of CGIU is to give all of these students and their groups and their projects resources to grow and to really make an impact on the world. So leading up to the conference, they are actually in contact with you all the time. They assign you a personal mentor that's in your area that can help you with the things you're doing, help give you advice, anything like that. They give you funding opportunities, they give you webinar series to talk about how to even do stuff like this, you know, depending on what you're doing, what you need. They give you so many amazing opportunities just leading up to the conference. So essentially during this weekend that you're at this global conference with these amazing people, you get to go through a series of activities starting Friday night, all day Saturday, and then a very special activity on Sunday. So a lot of these include uh, speakers that you can go and you can listen to, people from all sorts of professional fields giving you advice. We had anywhere from administrators from Snapchat to uh, Navy SEAL veterans to, I mean, President Bill Clinton himself who came and spoke to us the whole weekend, maybe about a total of five times we got to hear President Bill Clinton speak. We had Secretary Hillary Clinton come once. We had uh, Chelsea Clinton, who is actually the daughter of President Bill Clinton and Secretary Hillary Clinton, if you didn't know. Uh, and she's huge in the Clinton Global Initiative, so she was there for literally everything, speaking to us all the time, and actually getting to talk to the students one-on-one -on -one quite a bit, which was amazing. Um, if you didn't notice, the thumbnail of this video was me and Chelsea Clinton, along with some other CGIU members. So basically to sum it up, we we spend all of Friday evening and the whole day Saturday just hearing these amazing speakers, going to these exceptional workshops, learning how to network, learning how to manage funds for these projects, learning how to promote things on social media, etc. So, and then Sunday is the very special event that I mentioned a little bit. And what Sunday is, it's called the Outreach Day or the Volunteer Service Day. So basically, before you go to the conference, you get to select some areas that you would like to serve. They have a 
whole list of different places you're gonna be going to as volunteer service on that Sunday. And so you kind of rank them and then they give you your assignment before the conference. So in the morning from about 8 a.m. to noon, you get to go to the place that you've been assigned and you get to do service with them and learn about what makes that place so special. So that's kind of the basic rundown of the weekend. I might get into some more details a little bit later. I also wanted to mention that during this weekend, you get opportunities to present your work, whether that's through some funding applications that they have where you can actually speak about your projects on stage, or they have a whole special event you can literally apply to. And if you're chosen, you get to stand in this room and talk about your project to everybody in CGIU who's walking through, sort of like a poster session, if that makes any sense. So they seriously give you just a massive amount of opportunities. And if that's not enough on its own, it doesn't stop after the conference is over. The reason why it's called a Clinton Global Initiative University and not just Clinton Global Initiative is because you're considered a class. This is like your year together. This is your class of people. And so after the conference is over, you still have your mentor. They still have webinar series that they do all the time. You have the connections you've made from the conference and you can actually apply to go to the Clinton Global Initiative again if you want, if your project's evolving and you continue needing help. Or you can be a part of something called the 2030 program, which is for people who have amazing projects as well, but they're in their 20s and their 30s. You don't have to have been in the Clinton Global Initiative first to be in this program, but it's just a really cool way to continue networking and having access to these amazing resources. So I hope that was a pretty quick rundown of what the Clinton Global Initiative actually is. So now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my personal experience because I really had no idea what to expect when I applied for this and I was accepted. And even leading up to being on the plane, going to the conference, I really didn't know what to expect. And in three days, my life was changed forever. So let's start at the very beginning. Like I said, the Clinton Global Initiative is for students that have a project that serve a need. So my personal project is called the KU STEM Initiative for the time being. We're actually registering to be a nonprofit right now, so the name might change. But basically, I went on this crazy journey of deciding to make this organization, and that was what led me to applying to the Clinton Global Initiative in the first place. So starting at the very beginning, when I was in high school, my senior year, we had to do these capstone projects and you had to do something that you were passionate about, something that aligned with your interests. And I have always loved outreach. I actually enjoy public speaking. I get pretty nervous just like most people, but I love talking to people. I love departing wisdom if I can, helping people in pretty much any way possible. Hence kind of why I made this YouTube channel. So for my first project in the fall, I was interested in being pre-med and I was interested in dermatology. It was right around the time that I had discovered I really enjoyed that. And so what I did is I went to a seventh grade class that was actually at the middle school I attended and I taught all the seventh graders about skin cancer. And I had the most positive feedback from all the classes I talked to. I had kids asking me questions about science, asking how I get into stuff like this. I had people asking me to check their moles, which was very funny. But most importantly, I had students and especially young girls who were now suddenly interested in science and STEM because they had listened to me and they had learned that science and STEM is much more than just the classroom situation. You know, this can turn into something really interesting and meaningful. So after I had such a positive experience that first semester, I went my second semester with a group of my friends and we dressed up as Disney princesses and we read books about health to elementary schools. And again, I had such a positive feedback from all these students, just getting their mind turning about topics and science and STEM and healthcare. That was just very meaningful to me. So after having such a positive experience working in those environments, I knew that I didn't wanna stop there. I knew I wanted to go on to college and continue doing outreach like this, but I wasn't exactly sure how. I thought that most likely I would join an on-campus organization and then through them, maybe I would be able to start doing STEM outreach to K through 12 schools. And as I went to college and I joined some organizations and I tried things out, I kind of learned pretty quickly that organizations on campus have such limited funds and resources that even though an idea might be interesting, if it's not really the purpose of their group, they don't really have the time or resources to pursue it that much. 
So I was kind of not really sure where to go from there. And I sort of thought to myself, you know, why not? Why not start my own on-campus organization? There's nothing stopping me, you know? <laughs> and, and then I would actually be able to do this thing I cared so much about. And so I started talking to some friends and really playing with this idea. So that was how the KU STEM initiative got started. It's funny because we actually started filling out the paperwork to register as an on-campus organization last April. So we're approaching our one year anniversary and it has been quite the roller coaster. So anyway, with that being said, as I was registering this organization and I was having people become officers and figuring out just how to even do this, I decided to apply to the Clinton Global Initiative. I really didn't know very much about it, but I knew it looked very interesting. I knew it could be a positive experience and I thought, why not? I'm going on this crazy journey of registering my organization. This looks like a really cool opportunity, so I'm gonna do it. And so with that being said, I applied and I was accepted into the Clinton Global Initiative with the KU STEM Initiative as my commitment to action. And I started going through this whole process of learning what this organization even was. I was given a mentor who was really wonderful. She was this awesome, strong woman who also did STEM outreach. And she did CGIU three times and now she's on the CGIU honor roll, which basically that means you're an alum that has done a lot with her project that you are being honored by the Clinton Global Initiative. So I had her as my mentor. We got to do this amazing funding opportunity that was in a collaboration with GoFundMe and CGIU where different projects could be featured and we could have a funding competition, which was a great way for us to raise some initial funds for the organization. And I also was selected to present my project at CGIU in the sort of poster session that they had. So with that being said, we're now at the time of getting on the plane, going to Chicago, which is where CGIU was held this last year, and going to the conference. Basically, I flew Friday morning, we got there Friday afternoon, and everything started late afternoon and into the evening. So after dinner that evening, we got to go to our first event, which we heard President Bill Clinton speak for the first time along with his daughter, Chelsea Clinton, which was amazing. They introduced us to CGIU. They explained a lot more about the organization and what we were gonna be doing that weekend. It was so incredible because we were in this place surrounded by people from literally anywhere in the world. I mean, the way they would talk to us was like they knew us personally and it was just like the most insane experience. <laughs> Anyway, so Friday night was pretty chill. We mainly just did that and then went back to bed and Saturday was pretty much the big day full of everything. So Saturday, we get up bright and early. We go to a bunch of different workshops. I did some workshops on social media and I actually heard somebody speak who is now a huge inspiration to me, a huge role model for me. Uh, that person's name is Jacob. Tobia. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I am so sorry if I didn't, but I'll put all their information down below. So if you want to go follow them, you definitely should. They've done a lot of work in LGBTQ plus rights, uh, and they're actually launching their first book very soon and written for the New York Times and Playboy and Time Magazine, some pretty serious stuff. We got to do that. We went to more events where we got to hear Bill Clinton speak and his daughter Chelsea. And that evening, we actually heard Secretary Hillary Clinton speak, which was really cool. We had the whole family there. Uh, and then lastly, at the end of the evening, I got to present my project at the CGIU Exchange, is what it was called, and I was able to meet people from literally all around the world, tell them about what I'm passionate about, and actually be able to make some pretty cool network connections. And because of that evening alone, I am really happy to say that my organization is now doing global work in three different countries, and we're trying to implement STEM programs with them. So it's been a pretty wild ride since we're not even at one year of having this organization be around. Um, but we've expanded and now we're registering to be a nonprofit so we can continue expanding even outside of the college realm. So 
I'm serious, this whole event was just like the most life-changing experience. I could go on and on and on and on, honestly, I really could. So then to finish out the weekend, we did our volunteer service event on Sunday, and I got to do an event with something called Diet High School, which is this really cool high school in Chicago that is focused around the arts, but the whole environment they've set up is just so inclusive and so focused around helping their students. And so I got to spend a morning with them along with my other CGIU members doing some really cool art projects and just talking to them and, and hearing about their story because it's pretty incredible. Um, also, Chelsea Clinton popped in at the place I was at and I actually got to meet her and take a photo with her. And fun fact, she actually tweeted it on her Twitter, which was like, pretty crazy moment. So that was basically my experience at the conference. And just to kind of reflect on everything, growing up, I never really thought I would do anything in humanitarian work. I've always known that I want to do medicine. And I've been so passionate about that and about helping people. But to me, even though the idea of doing humanitarian work sounded very interesting and something like I would enjoy. I had always had this idea that in order to do service like that, you needed to be much older, you needed to be far along in your career, you needed to have like millions of dollars just to even do anything. And none of those things are true. It is absolutely insane to me how this whole experience of making my organization and then going to this conference showed me just how easy this stuff can actually be and how accessible it is. And yet people aren't told to pursue that. You know, I think society really teaches young people to value very shallow things, you know, to become the next great Instagram model and things like that. But that's, at the end of the day, it's not important, it's not fulfilling. And it really saddens me that so many people are discouraged from doing work like this based off the stigma that it's too difficult to do. And that's not true at all. I'm a living example of, I haven't even had this organization for one year and now we're doing work with global partners and hopefully able to really help those people along with the people in my own community. I went to this conference and it really blew my mind just how accessible this stuff is, just how easy it can really be to be a positive light for other people and to make a difference. I've now really realized that I want to become a physician and I want to obviously be in medicine, but I also want a big part of my life to be focused around this. I love outreach. I am so passionate about this and hopefully by making my organization a nonprofit, I can keep this a part of my life for my entire life. And this can be something that I can do to really help influence the lives of younger generations and help get them excited about STEM and help make it much more accessible for people. Anyway, if you have something that you've always been interested in but have just never really thought was out there for you, I'm here to tell you that it is. You can do it. It is there and it is so much closer to you than you might think. And so even though society might not train us to believe that these are things we can do, you know, like I said, I always grew up thinking you had to be a millionaire to do stuff like this and you don't, you don't. So that was just kind of my, my revelation that I took from that weekend. I walked out of there with friends from all over the world with incredible memories and a brand new perspective on life and on what service actually means. CGIU was seriously probably one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my entire life. Definitely one of the most meaningful. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, give it a like, maybe comment down below if anything relates to you, if you found this helpful at all. And if any of you are doing incredible projects on your own, definitely consider applying to the Clinton Global Initiative. It seriously was a huge step in helping my organization grow along with tons of others. If you guys want to see more uh, 
footage from that experience. I actually have a whole highlight on my Instagram just dedicated to the Clinton Global Initiative, and so does the Instagram page for the KU STEM Initiative. So if you wanna go see some more, you know, real life clips, you should go check that out. And in order to do that, if you wanna follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My Instagram is Natasha underscore LaGrega, and my Twitter is just Natasha LaGrega. Uh, and if you guys subscribe, please sure, please be sure to hit the little bell notification buttons that way you know when I upload my next videos but I really hope you guys enjoyed this this was just like the most meaningful experience to me and I'm really glad I get to share it with you now so anyway with that being said thank you guys so so much for watching all right have a great day guys bye